you know, there's two things that won, that won two wars, was tea and cigarettes. People don't realise it, and I don't think the, the, these these silly people up in in, in the government who are saying don't smoke and this that and the other thing. It may be wisdom, but it's it's not the salvation. We would have never won the war if if the, we hadn't provided our men with cigarettes. They were given cigarettes free, you see, and that's all they had to do was smoke. But it kept them alive and distracted them from the, the, the horrors of it all. Actually, the business is about 200 years old because uh, the, the former owner, he inherited it from his great-grandfather who built railway tunnels in this area. Strangely enough, the name of the shop was R.H. Arthur and Sons. And, uh, of course, it, it suited me. Uh, my name was Arthur. So I left uh, the, the Arthur in, in, on, the, on the front door. And uh, it's been Arthur's ever since. When I first came here, there was hardly anything in it and the place was filthy dirty. I was puzzled at first. I used to stand back and, and scratch my head so hard that I'm bald now. But uh, nevertheless, I used to stand back and scratch and think, what, what will I do? I had very little money to do, uh, to, uh, and I knew very little about, the, about the, the business, really. I did, hadn't been in retail business before. So I didn't know the windows were had to be changed and they were they were empty so I had to ch find stock for them. So anyway, as I was taking people were starting to come in and asking for things. So instead of buying one for them, I bought three and that's how I sort of went from there to then. To give you an example of the poor the business was Few firms didn't want to know me because the firm had a bad name. Then, after a, I used to go to one warehouse and I used to spend about 50, 17 to 20 pounds, and that would last me a, a week, maybe a bit longer, but a w week would go. And then I'd go shopping again, and ultimately, I was doing shopping every day. So after about six months, the stock started, shop started to take life and it was filling up slowly. And now, 40 years after, as you can see, it's packed to capacity. We're, we're always looking for sky oaks. There's reputed to be 11,500 items in this business. Of course, we incorporate all trades and we have to have a fair knowledge of them. So that's where the difficulty lies. As soon as people ask me for something, my brain turns on, have I got it or where can I get it? I buy everything that's here, and of course I handle it three times bef before, it, uh, and then it ultimately reaches its destination on the shelves. Mm -hmm. 
I've always had a very inquisitive mind. I do a fair amount of reading about various subjects, and uh, I have a very wide knowledge on the um, on the items we sell. And if we haven't got what they want, we, very often we can offer an alternative to, to that will satisfy their job. But the thing is to ha have that ability to transmit it. But and you, one could say that 75% uh, of the customers that come here, they uh, they're always willing to li chat and listen. I tell you what I'll do. You drill the holes, and I'll give you the j four nails. <laughs> That's all right. All right. I, I'll have to go and see if I can get something. With a, I'll have to go and see if I can get something with a bigger head. No, the... I've got bigger heads, sir. I've got everything. Right. Wait a I minute. Know I know you are. No. That's, that's why. That's why I come here. I li live to satisfy my customers. If it, my life really depends on making people happy, solving their difficulties and one thing or another. Perfect. Will you drill a hole for that? Right. Yes. I mean, it won't take you long to drill a hole. No, no, no. Drill a hole and put them in. And if I were you, you wouldn't need a plug if no. you if you um, put some. Yeah. I just got to put a, in there. I got to put a, a, a plaque up for the water board. That's what I got. A what? See? A plaque. This, this to tell them where the where the water main is. Yes. Well, I was born in in Planet Street, Roth, right alongside the infirmary. My mother was a Catholic. She was one of, of Irish extraction, and came over with a famine. And my father was an Englishman from Somerset, or Wiltshire. He, he was a carpenter. And in those days, it didn't matter what trade you were in. You, you had uh, good times and bad times. I mean, w work was spasmodic. And um, if you were in work, or, if you, you managed to get a corporation job, which was a job for life, as, as my mother told me once, that um, you you were re really uh, on a good level. But my father was a tradesman, a carpenter, and he, um, he had to take his, uh, the rough with the smooth. And we were a very large family. We were an eighteen family. So I was the eldest of them all. And of course, my mother was, we were very poor. There's no doubt about that. And um, I, as soon as I, I was capable, I, I had to go out to work. Well, in the Echo at that time, we had a, a cartoonist, Dick German, who used to depict almost every night about the new ground track that was being built on the fringe of Cardiff there in Greenstown. And I went to Grangeton, I didn't know where the hell I was going, I didn't even know where Grangeton was. But I found my way there, and I was go going, to, I thought it was down the end of Clive Street. And I was going down Clive Street then, there were some men working on the tram lines in those days. So I got on my bike and I asked him where the dog track was. Oh, you're miles out of the way, son. So... They redirected me then to uh, back uh, to where the track was, and I found it, and I went in there, and I saw the boss, and I asked him if he wanted an office boy. He said, yes, we could do with an office boy. He said, when can you start? I said, right now. Of course, they, my mother was thrilled to think that I was going to have a, some money at the end of the week. So I told them that I had to work late, three nights a week, and so it was. 